Hi, this is Mr. Grove and welcome to my screencast, my webcast on the muscular system. And uh, for this first uh, webcast, I want to take a look at muscle anatomy. When most people think of the muscular system, uh, bodybuilders, rippling muscles underneath the skin come to mind. And uh, this might be somewhat of a gross exaggeration of uh, rippling muscles as depicted by this bodybuilder. But again, a lot of people have this concept when they think of muscles. And what a cool picture over here. This is from the Body Worlds exhibit, uh, something that I hope I can take to class to uh, later in the year. So let's take a look for this first cast at uh, Gross Anatomy of Muscles, because you're going to find out it's extremely complex. I always like to think of the, the puzzle where you have a box within a box within a box within a box. You know, the old Christmas gag where you put a present in a big box, you open it up and there's another box. And you open it up and there's another box until we get down to the tiny box at the very center of the whole system. And I think you're going to see that this, that my analogy is probably pretty accurate. Muscles are complex. So let's get started. You remember from our study of histology at the beginning of the school year that there's actually three types of muscles. We've got cardiac muscles found where? Just in the heart. We've got skeletal muscles and probably for the, re the uh, remainder of this discussion and further discussions on the muscle system, that's really what we're going to be talking about is skeletal muscles and we have smooth muscles. And your job as students is to make sure you understand the similarities and differences in the three muscles. Uh, what comes to mind right now is that cardiac, or what you can actually see right away, is that both cardiac and skeletal muscle are striated in appearance. And you'll remember that when you were looking at it on the microscope. The other thing that's really obvious is skeletal muscle is multinucleated, whereas both cardiac and smooth muscle are single or uninucleated. So that's just uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, differences and similarities between the muscles. And again, it's your job to uh, take a closer look at the three and, and be able to tell me what the similarities and differences are. Now, muscles, really, when you get right down to it, they have one function and one function only, and that is to contract, to essentially get shorter, to um, become reduced in size. And when a muscle contracts, that creates all the movements that uh, we're capable of. So your muscles are really analogous to machines. But, you know, this in, a, in anatomy class, we don't want to just say contraction. We want to go into a little bit more detail. So I put here that muscle functions are there to maintain posture. They stabilize the joints. They generate body heat. And they do other things as well. But really, I think you can't go wrong if you just realize that muscles do basically one thing. They contract. So when they're not contracting, they're relaxing. And if you remember that, you've uh, gone a long way in your understanding of the muscular system. Let's take a look at the anatomy. As I said, it's, it's very difficult. And we're going to, for our next discussion, go into the sliding filament theory and, and what actually causes a muscle to contract. And, and that's tough, too. I'm telling you, people think, uh, my students always think that when you get into muscles, things are going to be easier. But this is certainly one of the tougher subjects in human anatomy. So, and just look at this graphic in front of you, and you can see there's a lot of vocabulary here that we've got to worry about. So why don't we pretend that, uh, as we know, tendons connect muscle to bone. And here is the, the large muscle. And let's pretend this is the bicep muscle, you know, the, the muscle you see when guys want to flex their muscle at the beach. Uh, guys in the weight room always doing curls to try to uh, make their arms look great when the reality is it's really your triceps that make your muscles look so big but I digress anyway so let's take a look this is the overall muscle right here and you can see that if we take a knife and chalk right through the muscle that the muscle is actually made out of many bundles 
So these are these bundles right here. This is one bundle and it's called a fascicle. That's singular. So in this graphic, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12 fascicles. So let's zero in on the fascicle. As we zero in on the fascicle, we see that it's actually made up of many muscle fibers. And muscle fibers, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, these muscle fibers are the muscle cells. And these are some of the largest cells in the body. They can be as much as 30 centimeters long. That's about a foot long. And these fibers are actually plainly visible to the naked eye when you're looking at huge muscles, which they call anti-gravity muscles. The muscles, say, in our hips, lower back, that are responsible for keeping us upright against the force of gravity. So these are large structures, but they're just a cell like any other cell and can be easily damaged. So what makes them so strong is the fact that they are bundled in this arrangement, one on top of another, and then have very tough connective tissues holding them together. And so we do in our study of muscles do need to learn about this deep fascia, epimysium, uh, the endomysium, <clears throat> and so on, and the perimysium. So we do need to look into that as well. But let's continue with our gross anatomy here. So we have this, we have the fascicle made up in this case of 13 muscle fibers. So here's the muscle fiber. And remember, it's a cell. And like all cells, it has a plasma membrane. But in the case of muscles, we don't call it a plasma membrane, we call it a sarcolemma. So it's just getting the terminology down. And you know, terminology is half the battle in any science class anyway, and certainly in a biology or anatomy physiology class, it's pretty challenging stuff. This muscle cell shows two nuclei here because remember we're looking at skeletal muscle and it's striated and it has multinuclei. Okay, so now let's look inside. So what we find inside, remember our box, a box within a box within a box, and now we look in here and we can actually see that our muscle fiber, here's the cytoplasm, but since this is a muscle, we call it a sarcoplasm, is actually made up of many more repeating subunits called myofibrils. So in this example, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten myofibrils. Now, beginning students often get these things confused. So don't get your myofibrils confused with your muscle fibers. Okay, Different structure altogether. So real important that you look this over closely in the book and in my notes that will be coming and make sure you get this anatomy down. You got to have this understanding or the sliding filament theory is going to be tough. Now you can probably guess as you look here at the myofibril that we've got, <laughs> here we go again, a smaller box radiating out from here. So let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> Boy, that sure looks exciting, doesn't it? What we have over here is one muscle fiber, muscle cell. How do we know it's a muscle cell? What would cue you in there? Well, a couple of things. What's this? Okay, we've got a nucleus. What's the sarcolemma again? Remember, the sarcolemma is the plasma membrane that surrounds this. And we can't really see the cytoplasm in here, but what we can see are these subunits of myofibrils. And as we close in over here, we can see once again that they have subunits. And these subunits are protein filaments, thick filaments and thin filaments. So thick myosin filaments and thin actin filaments or, or proteins. And we'll certainly go into that in a lot more detail when we uh, go into the sliding filament theory. Okay, so taking a look at this a little bit closer up, we see that, and now we're looking at this, these uh, fibrils right here, and you can see the thick filaments here made out of, uh, or thin filaments here made out of actin, and the thick units right here made out of myosin. And this, you're essentially the sarcomere, is the functional unit 
of the muscle. And what I mean by functional unit, that's where it's all going to happen. Remember what the job of the muscle is. Its job is to shorten, to contract. And this is the actual unit that's going to, to do that job. So let's watch the short video and see the animation. Skeletal muscles, like the biceps brachii, attach to bone via connective tissue called tendons. Muscles are composed of bundles of muscle fibers. Each bundle is separated by connective tissues known as paramyzium. Each fasciculus is made up of muscle fibers, which are separated by connective tissue called endomyzium. Skeletal muscle fibers or cells are multinucleated and striated in appearance. Muscle cells are composed of subunits called myofibrils. Each myofibril is made up of several myofilaments. The two types of myofilament shown in red are composed primarily of the protein myosin and a thin myofilament shown in blue composed mainly of the protein actin. The repeating arrangement of thick and thin myofilament serves as the fundamental subunit of striated muscle contraction. These subunits are called sarcomeres. A sarcomere contraction is represented by the shortening of the distance between the Z lines. The sarcomere shortens because the thin filaments slide past the thick filaments. In 3D, each thick myofilament is surrounded by six thin myofilaments arranged in a hexagonal pattern. The 3D arrangement of sliding myofilaments is the microscopic basis of muscle contraction. Well, there you go. Pretty exciting. And I think that will conclude our brief introduction of the muscular system and gross anatomy. And so this is Mr. Grove signing off for now and looking forward to talking to you about the sliding filament theory and actual contraction of muscles. Goodbye.